Hey guys, welcome back to Critical Flick. Today I'll be reviewing Top Gun Maverick. So Top Gun Maverick is the sequel to the Top Gun film that came out over 30 years ago. And in this story, we're seeing Maverick going back to the Top Gun program. He's been away from the program for many years. He's working in the, you know, working with the private sector. He's working with Lockheed Martin, I think, at the beginning of the film with experimental ships, kind of seeing how great he is as a pilot. And he needs to be taken back to the Top Gun program by the orders of Iceman, who's now the leader. of. When Maverick returns to Top Gun, he's tasked with teaching the best pilots in the military to do a mission that is seemingly impossible. They need to fly into enemy territory, pull off some incredible maneuvers at extremely high speeds, low altitude, just everything that could be difficult as a pilot. And he's here to train them in just a few weeks to accomplish this mission. And I have to say right away, this movie is phenomenal. We saw it in IMAX and it really blew me away. I was holding this, I got a commemorative popcorn bucket that's made out of metal. And when the planes were flying and the engines were really roaring, you could really feel this metal shaking. So it was really incredibly immersive. And all the shots that they did inside of the cockpits and the outside angles and the overhead, it's filmed in a way that's just, its I can't say anything other than it's really incredible. Of course, because of all that, the sound design is excellent. You're really, like I said, immersed into this film. And it really hits you emotionally on a lot of levels as well because it is so powerful, not just through the cinematography and sound design, but the storytelling. That's one of the criticisms I had of the original Top Gun is I feel like it's a pretty shallow film. It has some emotional moments, but it can be a little melodramatic, a little cheesy. This movie is far more serious, even though it does have a good interjection of comedy. Tom Cruise's character as Maverick is obviously still likable. He's like that kind of cocky, charismatic pilot that you love to see on screen. But then it really hits hard with some of his family moments, some of his history with Rooster, you know, Goose's son, and how that relationship plays out, it really tugs at your heartstrings. And I think if you're a fan of the original Top Gun, you might be emotionally impacted by this movie that's really well acted, those scenes in particular with the emotions, with the struggles of getting through the relationships between these two characters. It really hits home in a lot of places. I also feel like the soundtrack is really good for this one. Obviously, people they know all the songs that people love from the original film, and they bring that back and some callbacks in this one, but you also have some great new music you know, from Hans Zimmer, from Lady Gaga. It works really well. I never felt like any of it was super cheesy in any way. And like I said, it hits on emotional notes and really you know gets you pumped up for those action scenes, those big missions that they go on. So in this film, we're introduced to some new characters. Like I said, you have Goose's son, Rooster, as well as some other pilots that are the best in their class. And Hangman is this kind of cocky replacement in a way of how Iceman was to his Maverick. So Rooster's Iceman would be Hangman. But I like how that story comes full circle by the end. You get, like I said, a lot of callbacks to the original movie. There's a lot of scenes that think back, oh, I remember that. I remember this kind of relating to that. So there is a lot of fan service that I think would really satisfy those that are fans of the original film. All the acting is really good. I think Tom Cruise is great as his return as Maverick. It feels like a very personal film. It feels like something he's wanted to do for a long time, and it feels like a culmination of his career. So while it is its own standalone film, if you are a Tom Cruise fan, you're also going to really love it. Miles Teller is really good as Rooster, in my opinion. He has a lot of really emotional scenes, some really intense scenes that I think elevate the film to a different level. It's not just a cheesy action movie that really hits on those notes of the first film. Like I said, it's a story about family, about relationships, about growth and letting things go. And there's a lot of mourning and loss. There's a lot going on in this movie. I'm trying to avoid a ton of spoilers in this review, but I will say I want to talk a little bit about the third act of the film. So if you don't want any spoilers at all, I would check out now and maybe come back at the end of the video where I get my rating. So right now I'll talk about the third act of the movie. So in the third act, they go in and they're doing the mission and Tom Cruise is kind of shot down behind enemy lines and Rooster decides to come back and rescue him and he in turn also gets shot down. And I thought in that moment, I almost felt like the movie was going to jump the shark. It was going to get really ridiculous. There's a moment with an attack helicopter and then, you know, commandeering an old plane. But it ends up working really, really well. And it really gives a full arc to their characters and their relationships. And Maverick being back in his old plane and kind of teaching, you know, having Rooster back there being his goose. And just, it really worked. I didn't expect it to work. When it hit those moments, I was like, okay, it's maybe getting a little long. They shouldn't have added this last 30 minutes to the film. But I, I thought it was great. I love that they added it. And I think it elevated the movie in a way that if they hadn't have done that, and it would have ended kind of with, you know, the Maverick being shot down, sacrificing himself for Rooster, it would have worked. But this, I think, added just a little bit more to the movie. And another thing that I would have to say about the movie is being able to have Val Kilmer return as Iceman and have him and Tom Cruise on scene together, talking about their iconic characters, being back with one another. It was really touching Ben and being able to get him back you know, in the full with everything he's gone through with his health, having him there, it really, it really strikes a chord. And like I said, with this movie, if you're a fan of the original and you have an emotional connection to the original movie, 
this will really strike on those notes. While I don't necessarily have a really strong connection with the first film, it still touched me in different ways, and I just think it's a really well-made movie. It's probably the best movie of the year so far. If I were to rate this movie, I would have to give it a 10 out of 10. It's one of the few 10 out of 10s I've given out on this channel. Obviously, the first one I've done this year. Just a really well-made movie. I couldn't really say any negatives for it. It's well-made, it's well-shot, it's well-acted, It's the sound design's great, cinematography's great. I mean, there's nothing bad to say about it. If you haven't had a chance to check it out, I highly recommend checking it out. If you can see an IMAX, do that. Because like I said, the sound design and the cinematography, it really hits you. It's filmed for IMAX, so it definitely works on those levels. So yeah, if you've checked it out, let me know what you think about it. If you haven't checked it out, are you excited to see it? Leave those comments down below. Remember to like and subscribe. See you guys next time.